Well, welcome once again to a cup of Joe with, with Joe. Um, not sure what time zone you all are in, but um, I'm hoping your coffee tastes as good as, as my coffee. Uh, today's topic is capillarity, and we're going to focus on concrete um, and a little bit on, 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 on wood, but uh, capillary is a big deal with materials that are, are porous. And the best way to describe capillarity is materials that, that wick or suck. And so if I was to have a paper towel uh, and put one end of a paper towel in the water, the water will wick up in that, in that paper towel. And um, how high it wicks is determined by the size of the, of the pores. The tinier the pores, the higher the water will, 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 will wick. The materials with the tiniest pores wick the most. So if I was to take uh, a bucket of water and place one end of a column of concrete in the water, water will wick upwards in concrete to a height of 10 kilometers or 6 miles. I mean, you, you think about that for a minute. 10 kilometers. I mean, six miles. That's like serious sucking. That's that's amazing. Um, but that's that's concrete. So in, in in Toronto, we have the tallest freestanding concrete structure in the world. It's uh, about 2,000 feet. How come it's not the largest freestanding sprinkler in the world? Well, because when the water wicks into the concrete and it gets above grade, it evaporates to the outside. So if we were to paint it, the tower black in Toronto, and call it the Darth Vader Tower with dead dinosaur juice, <coughs> we would have the water go to the very, very top. Um, if I was to replace the column of concrete with a column of wood, um, I'm going to get water going about 400 feet. Um, well, how do we know that? Well, that's, that's the height of a tree. Trees are limited to how tall they can grow based on the pore size, the capillary pore size in the wood. Um, it's, 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 it's quite remarkable. Now, the, the guy who figured all of this out was an Irish guy hiding from the English in Scotland. And uh, he was real smart, but he had an attitude and got into trouble. But he was really, really smart. And the queen at the time, Victoria, said, this is a really smart guy. We should maybe knight him or make him a lord or whatever. And the problem was is that, of course, um, he didn't have any property. Uh, but outside his lab, uh, laboratory in Edinburgh, there was a, a stream, of course, you know, the Scots exaggerate everything, so they called it a river, river. So they named him after the Kelvin River. So Lord Kelvin and the Kelvin equation explain capillary, capillary rise. It's quite, it's quite remarkable. Well, so what Kelvin showed us was that if we fill in the pores and get rid of them, we're not going to have capillary rise. Or if we make them really big, we won't have capillary rise. So in foundation systems, for example, we put large holes under our concrete slabs, stones, our capillary break. And then on the perimeter walls, we usually cover them with black bitumen or dead dinosaur juice to fill in the pores. But what do we do at the footings? We don't do anything at the footings. Now, back in the old days when we didn't care about water getting into a footing and then evaporating to the inside of our basement, we didn't care in those days because basements weren't meant to be lived in. They were basically cellars where we had roots and coal and stuff. And now we have entertainment centers and bedrooms and nurseries and whatever and we can know and we, we finish them. We, we, we put insulation on the walls, we cover it with gypsum board and that capillary water through the footing is now a big deal. So we now have to put a capillary break on the top of the foundation. Um, easy conceptually but not always easy in, in practice. Now we've known about this for a long time and the old historic architects um, in the 1800s and the early 1900s would build their mass foundation walls on top of stones and, and rubble. 
So the stones were a capillary break, very elegant under those old, old buildings. Um, now we don't do that as a practice. We put a big slab or flat area of concrete and call it a footing, and the capillary break needs to, is most practically put on the top of that. Now if you coat the, cap, the top of the, the foundation with uh, a fluid capillary break, you have to make sure that it um, dries quickly enough and it doesn't stay sticky because if it does, the, uh, <laughs> the concrete form people will hunt you down and paint you black and because this black sticky stuff is, ruins, their, ruins their stuff. And trust me, you don't want to irritate a concrete person. That's just, just, just you'll get stoned. You don't want to do that. Another is to put a membrane down, and that's kind of cool that the membrane has to adhere to the concrete, the top of the footing, and it has to not have, it has to not have pores. And so you've got two approaches, a, a fluid or a fully adhered membrane. So we're done, right? No, 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 we're not done. Yeah, you have structural engineers. Some structural engineers are, are smart and handsome, and others are not smart but handsome. This is not working out, but structural engineers sometimes have a concern about connecting the foundation wall to the footing. Um, I don't think it's a real structural concern, but sometimes you have to consider it a structural concern. And back in the old days, we would put a, a groove or a slot uh, in the footing, a kerf into the footing, a keyway into the footing. Um, well, it's hard to it's, it's hard to span that keyway uh, unless you have a fluid or a membrane that's flexible enough to do that. Um, rarely do we see keyways now, and now you would have penetrating rebar or reinforcing rods to connect the the foundation uh, wall to the to the footing. Um, reason I never thought it was a a really big deal is the, the slab is a pretty good support on one side of that foundation wall and the dirt on the other side and um, I don't know how to say this but I haven't seen a building fall off of the foundation wall recently. Now of course if you have a Carol King moment where the earth moves under your feet see that's an earthquake then you want to have a positive connection and you're going to have to have reinforcing. So at the end of the day this capillarity thing is pretty easy according to Lord Kelvin, but at practice, not so easy. Make the pores big or make the pores small. Making the pores small requires stuff that sticks to other stuff really well. Um, and at the end of the day, never irritate a structural engineer. See you again for another Coffee Talk someday. <laughs>